welcome to Grapes with CEOs. I'm your host, Patrick Wood, and joining me today, I have the pleasure to introduce Adam Sigelski, CEO of iCarrot Innovations. iCarrot is a publicly traded company on the Toronto Venture Exchange. I guess, Adam, thank you for joining me Thanks and for welcome me, to the show. Thank you. Um, before we taste the wine and talk about that, I just wanted to say that it's a pleasure having you. You're our first guest on this first episode of Grapes with CEOs. So Happy you, you have the honor to be here and we have the honor to have you. So very excited. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so why don't we kick off? We'll talk a little bit about um, this wine that you, you mm -hmm. thankfully and gratefully brought to, to join us here today. It looks like a fabulous bottle. I can tell when we opened it, it smelled fantastic. It looks, I mean, the legs on this thing are fantastic. Um, where do we start? Well, okay, so you know, introduced to this beautiful bottle of wine over uh, dinner with some good friends, and uh, it just blew me away. You know, I'm, I've, uh, I've had some wonderful wines in the past. I'm not the biggest connoisseur, but this was, uh, this was a memorable moment. So, okay. uh, bold taste, very smooth, uh, Napa Valley, uh, Cab Sav, uh, very well ranked, and ultimately, you know, with a good steak, uh, it's explosive in taste, and it just gives you a really smooth, quick finish. So awesome. Beautiful yeah, one. Great, I'm great. looking forward to tasting it. Well, you, you mentioned a few things. Steak. You've got me on steak already. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is from the Camus Vineyard, and it's a Napa Valley. And when you're tasting a wine, what, is it, what are some of the things that you look for and that you identify in this wine? Uh, you know, obviously, once it breathes, you know, you want to, you, you don't want to see whether that's going to, that first taste for me is obviously the, the big punch, right? And, yeah. And ultimately, you know, the smell, you know, I, I, can, I can tell right away whether I'm going to have a good experience, but ultimately that aftertaste is, is what separates like good and great wines. And uh, you don't get a lot of, you know, you get that fruity, explosive feeling, yeah. but you don't get this, uh, this sweet aftertaste. Love so, it. Love it. Well, you know, well why, don't we, why don't we give it a little shot? We haven't tried it yet. Cheers. Uh, cheers. Let me know what you think. So. Very the, nice. Uh, it's balanced. Very it's not, nice. It's, it's a little bit on the dry side. Very nice. Very nice. It's a little drier, right? Yep. Beautiful floral, floral taste. Mm. It just opens up. There's mm. berries. There's I taste the berries. There. I do. I, taste I think there's some figs in there. So it's uh, lovely. And again, it's the kind of wine that you know you, uh, you know, it just it disappears. And yeah, you know, you're looking for the next bottle. Excellent. So it's a, it's a look forward to to sharing this think, with you. I think this is a real. This is a, a beautiful traditional Napa. This is exactly what you look out look look, look for in a Napa wine. Mm. Mm. Again, it's you know mm. a little bit on the Fantastic. pricier side, but uh, you know special occasions and good friends. It's a uh, yeah, it, it's quite nice. And, well, better to pay up than yeah. uh, than to be disappointed, right? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I guess that hundred percent. I so. agree. I think with wine, that's it's got to be the um, the go to these days. Um, I, I've always been a quality guy, and yeah. uh, you know this is this is really a special wine, and ultimately. Know, not the kind of thing you'll have every day, maybe, but uh, yeah, love it. So. Awesome. Well, look, this is fantastic. Um, I suppose you know, moving on to I Care it quickly and just kind of talking about why we're here, um, other than to enjoy this fabulous bottle of wine, is to talk about your company, yep. I Care it Innovations. I think, you know, I Care it Innovations for me when I was first introduced to the to the company. Um, you know, one of the things you did is you showed me a video. It was a, a video clip of a kid playing hockey, getting smacked in the middle of the ice rink. The kid couldn't walk. I think it was a concussion at the time that he had. And your solution, the platform, really immediately, you know, kind of set this kid straight. He was able to walk correctly. And, you know, being a, a Canadian, you know, we grew up obviously playing hockey and lacrosse, both very violent sports where concussions were absolutely par for the course, and, and they still are today in, in places like hockey and football for sure. We hear more and more about it today, but to have a platform like iCarrot and the Bonovi platform that people can use and that they can take home with them in some cases, and so, so they're not in the hospital all the time, all these kinds of key things that the world is looking for today, 
that really is exciting and i i think you know what you guys are doing is 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 amazing and you know if you could kind of share like a little bit how you got involved in that and and in this in this company i think yeah. that would be great you know it's as an entrepreneur you're looking for big opportunity you know you want to swing for the fences you want to find yeah. something big uh, and and really this whole social entrepreneurship hooked me you know after i was in the mining space before uh, and ultimately, I found my son had a vision issue, a binocular vision issue, how his two eyes work together. And it's a problem that was missed by many optometrists. And I came across one guy who said, this is a big problem. This affects one in four people in the world. Uh, and so I was kind of torn between, okay, what's wrong with my son? And that's a big opportunity. You know? Right. That's, yeah. There's a billion people that have an issue with their visual systems and why... Why is there no solution around it? How do we approach that problem? So for us, it became sort of an exciting social opportunity to say, if we can tackle a big problem like that, how do we fix it, right? And, yeah. and with my son's case, it required a lot of work. It required therapy. It required homework. It required training. And how old was he at the time? He was, uh, he's, t he's 10 now, so he was about six. Oh, just, OK, a little guy. A little okay. guy. Yeah falling behind in reading, yeah. uh, because his visual system, his depth perception, he couldn't see clearly, you know, mm -hmm. how, how, how you pick up a ball, how you catch a ball, uh, when it came to the classroom, falling behind in reading. So, you know, you're talking about confidence issues, you're talking about true impacts on a child. Yeah. And the doctor's saying, oh, let's give him some glasses. Oh, nothing you can do about it. The standard of care, right? That's right. Yeah. We've got, we've got 10 minutes give the kids some glasses you. and let's, boom, done. Yeah. Right. So that, yeah. Was, that didn't stick with us. We found a doctor who said, you know, this is going to take some work, but we can train this. So we started doing this vision training and, um, and realized this is a lot of work. The tools are so antiquated. There's no data. There's no, yeah. like, where's the app? Where's my experience here? I'm getting handed a binder. And, uh, and you know, I sat with my CTO at the time who we, we had just brought in and we said, you know, well, coincidentally, his wife is the doctor that was treating my uh, my son. Okay. And right. uh, and we said, how do we how do we make right. all this work? I said, I've got this horrible experience with these binders and these paper notes, and and uh, we kind of both came to the conclusion we could we could deliver a mobile solution here. We could give doctors really cutting edge software that yeah. allows them to to you know help evaluate the patient and then treat them at home. So, what was a personal experience with my son uh, and about a year's worth of therapy has now, my son has evolved into one of the top students in his class. He's comfortable jumping in on the Amazing. soccer field. Amazing. He's catching balls. Yeah. yeah. You know, his confidence is getting a little too high. We're going to have to... Is he still... Is, yeah, of course, is he still wearing glasses, though? There was never... Glasses were only used to sort of take the pressure off the eyes for a few months just Got to it. allow him to sort of do the therapy. And then yeah. the glasses, there's no need for glasses. No glasses. It's Gone. not a clarity Amazing. issue. It's how, yeah. how his eyes operate, how the muscles of his eyes operate. You know, it was only about a decade ago that we finally, maybe 12 years ago, that we confirmed neuroplasticity works. We can change the brain. Yeah. And with the visual system, you can change the visual system because it's being driven by the brain. So, um, so we've reached a point now in the world where we know we're changing the brain. We yeah. know there, there's long-standing uh, research to support that. Yeah. We, we bought a company that has a tool that is one of the top vision training tools in the world. Uh, we've, you know, historically, I think our devices in four or five thousand locations around the world. So we re-engineered that technology, and uh, and we believe we're, we're creating a really cutting-edge, cool solution that. You know, if you go on Instagram now, and I'll share it with with, uh, with, with you after. Yeah. You, you've seen basketball players, MMA fighters. Uh, oh yeah. Guys who are winning the Major League Baseball uh, uh, home run derbies are using our technology. Guys that have had concussions and are recovering. You know, one of our good advisors. Yeah. Used our technology to recover from his concussion. You know, followed that up, signed a ten, I think a three-year contract, a substantial contract to lead his team to the Stanley Cup Finals. So, wow. You know, phenomenal. Phenomenal that's results. Great. And, uh, and, and yeah, that's, it started with a personal experience, tackling a big problem. Yeah. And then the hard work started. So. So, so amazing. Like, fantastic. Now, the solution, can we talk a little bit about how the solution works? Yeah. I mean, because I've seen it before, but, you know, for our viewers, you know, they'll want to know a little bit about it. I mean, sure, it's, know, a, I think it's, it's, it's a software centric platform. So, what that means yeah. is we use really nice software to drive the hardware and to to give the patients that experience. So we've got an iPad application that the doctors can use. We've got an iOS and an Android app that the patients use at home. Yeah. We connect to a physical device where the patient is pressing buttons as quickly as they can to train their functional visual system. And, and let me just explain that. Today you go to the doctor and he will test for two things, disease 
what disease do you have? You know, there's 3,000 eye diseases. Let me find them. I want to, you know, put on my. Are you kidding? Lab coat. Seriously, there are 3,000 3, eye diseases. About eye, yeah, there's 3,000 oh eye gosh. diseases. Optometrists have to learn about these diseases in university. Yeah. Computers are now helping to identify those diseases much quicker. Machine learning is doing that. So. Yeah. Um, so you've got disease management, and you've got you know clarity. What is your? Mm -hmm. you know, do you need glasses? Can I sell you these glasses? Uh, which is you know, you know, AI is helping to the, to do the disease management. Yeah. And you've got you know marginalizing or, or decreased margins in product sales. There's this whole other element of vision, which is functional vision. How do your eyes and brain work together? Mm -hmm. Now, if I'm an athlete and all I have is tunnel vision, then I don't see the guy coming from the side of me who's going to hit me and give me a concussion. Uh, if I'm a center midfielder in soccer, you know, or anywhere in a sport, yeah. how do I see in my peripheries? How do I manage all the objects around me? That's functional. Of course, that yeah. can be trained. That's all. You know, so even uh, if a person doesn't have a condition, correct. this is training. We are talking about performance enhancement. We're talking wow. about children with issues that we need to bring them up to sort of reading levels to let them just take off to, to substantially higher levels. And we're talking about, you know, having a concussion, vision skills Amazing. dropping. And yeah. retraining, you know, the, the athlete that we that were working with in the NHL, um, he he reported that, you know, he had this drop in his functional visual system. He trained that visual system. Uh, he came back and he could see at substantially higher levels and 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 greater visual skills than he did before he even used the uh, before he even had his concussion. So, That's incredible. You know, it's you know yeah. Wayne Gretzky's a great example. He you know he, his visual system was so incredible that. I think he's got more points through assists in his career than anyone has ever accumulated in, his, in their careers. Yeah. And it's because his vision, you know, vision leads movement. He can put the puck where it needs to be. So we're That's most excited right. about uh, helping people that obviously need that help. But the, the, the big opportunity is performance enhancement is, yeah. you know, how many athletes are there out there? How many, how many 10 year olds can we help to develop that visual system yeah. so that they have yeah. that shot? So, so if the, the so, so I guess if you're a normal human being mm -hmm. and you would like to use this system, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you how do you get it? So what, what we're trying to do is make sure that all the standard of care goes through the optometry, and we want to make sure okay. that before we're telling you, you know, we're not telling the patients how to how to enhance their visual systems. We're starting yeah. by saying, you know, fill out this questionnaire. Make sure you don't have an underlying issue. Yeah. Um, go to one of our doctors who we think we should do an eye exam on you first because. Got it. Last thing we want to do is train a system that is that is inefficient and needs to be worked on. Mm -hmm. uh, but ultimately, you would go through an optometrist that uses our platform. You'd go to our website. You go on to the providers network, and yeah. uh, I think we have over 200 clinics now across North America, either with our hardware or software. So awesome. we've 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 built a bit of a market, and um, and we're starting to drive patients to clinics. Yeah, and do people pay? You know, do they pay and you know to to use the software? Like, how how does it work? Yeah, so we make uh, we make the doctor doctors pay a subscription fee and ultimately okay. we don't charge the patients at all. What we do is we charge the doctors uh, and if they want to add patients then they get billed for that and we provide the infrastructure for the doctor to maintain that standard of care. It, it's up to them to say this patient needs four weeks of work or this patient needs 40 weeks of work. You know, we, yeah. we can't diagnose that. We yeah. don't want to get into that business. We want to make sure that we're providing a solution that the optometrists yeah. uh, or the care providers use. Uh, but ultimately, you mentioned concussions, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I showed mm -hmm. you that video. Yeah. That, that kid fell on his back. He, he was hit. He fell on his back. He rolled over. So he did damage to his neck. He did damage to his brain. He did damage to his eyes. Those are three different care providers that now need to be you know, dealing with this. So where do you go? Do you go to the neurologist? Do you go to the chiropractor? Do you go to the sports vision doctor? Do you just get go home and sit in a dark room for two months and say, I hope I get better? Yeah. The insurance companies don't know. It's uh, And ultimately, vision is the starting place, right? Get your eyes checked. Make sure if there's a, if there's a visual issue, if there's an issue with your neck, uh, you're going to have to have two or three different providers help you. So the infrastructure we have yeah. is being designed to make sure that when the patient can download the app, yeah. we can make sure they go to the right locations to get the right kind of exam first and build that, that care That's plan. Fantastic. because. You know, in many cases, insurance companies are paying up to $50,000 for a brain injury. If you surpass $50,000 of care, yeah. they pass it on to a million dollar liability. Okay, so if you're not fixing this patient in $50,000 of budget, yeah. it's a million dollar problem. So with our software, you should be able to identify where you need to go first. Get the visual system checked first. Love it. That's a two hundred fifty dollar yeah. test. It's so huge. It's, it's huge. It's really ultimately the insurance companies can be saving millions of dollars on care. Sports teams can be making sure that their athletes are performing at the top level. And if they do have a concussion, 
we can pick up performance drops, right? And, Amazing. And ultimately, you're going to get a concussion if you have bad vision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah, skating with your head yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. You're going to get course. hit. So. so, I mean, I could imagine you. You must be talking with a lot of different organizations. I mean, I, I mean, the yeah. NFL would be a. I mean, yeah. it's a no-brainer. Yeah, I mean. Um, so, how are you guys marketing this, and you know, how are you getting you know awareness? out there on um, on this product so it's really it's you know we're trying to use the platforms uh, to get to the masses and and ultimately Instagram Twitter social media yeah. showing demonstrations of our technology showing professional athletes using our stuff uh, is a great way for us to get you know if I've got a top MMA fighter who just won his fight and he's posting yeah. a video of our technology saying so glad my hand-eye coordination was fast yeah yeah i avoided course. that punch then that that's an obvious uh, way for us to do that mm -hmm. uh, next step really is nfl major league baseball hockey you know basketball yeah. getting you know what we're working towards is getting high profile athletes as advocates of our product uh, you know giving them the infrastructure to say hey i use this it's a great product for me mm -hmm. and, and then mm -hmm. it's easy to sort of sell into the, the top teams you want to be providing infrastructure for those top teams because yeah, of course it's great brand awareness it's great the optometrist yeah. that we work with it's the best marketing yeah. team right there it is, is is the football right. team so yeah yeah five million followers you know f fans you know ultimately our starting place is just making sure our hardware is in a good spot, get it out to the right channels, get that posted socially, and then yeah. ultimately we start building momentum. From it's there. amazing. Then, yeah. you know, it's taken two and a half years to just, you know, the government gave us some really good investment into our hardware. Yeah. Uh, we've was that the Canadian government or, or the uh, Ontario? It was, it was National Research Council, and it was okay. IRAP yeah. has given us two, uh, two investments now of, uh, or two grants of close to a half million dollars. Uh, Great. And we're looking for another half million from them right now. So we expect to have over a million dollars of funding from, you know, well, you know, national it's government. Fantastic. That's obviously. It's great. And and the fact that we've shown revenue and we we're actually selling the product that, that they helped us build, uh, is encouraging them to continue to support us. Got it. And and you guys right now you're a well-funded company. I understand you just mm -hmm. raised almost five million bucks. So you've got that in the in the coffers ready to market and expand and, right. and build on the um, it's on the you know offering. we don't have a super high burn rate um, you know mm -hmm. we're pretty efficient as a team uh, we've built a lot of our technology it's really now about capturing the data connecting that data and, and extending the software uh, so it's really we're going to use that money to to market the story to market the uh, you know the product you know, we, we're making two significant hires here that are going to help drive into the sports market, the athletic market. Yeah. Um, we've got great, you know, infrastructure and we've got great leadership, right? Like it's, we've, yeah. got, we've got Perfect. thought leaders at the board level. We've got them at the advisory level. We've got uh, great educators, great leaders as part of our team. So yeah. the infrastructure includes, you know, that, that, that learning material for doctors, that learning of material course. for the athletes. Yeah. And, and it's about, is it giving them... You know, giving the end user data, giving them research, giving them understanding that uh, here's how you get started. Because it's a Got it. yeah. treating the visual system's hard. And and if you're an optometrist, you want to start today, you know, first of all you want cool stuff so that your patients are having a good experience. So we've had many customers say, Well, you know, the cool factor of your technology is really helping to sell yeah, the service. So that's a really good starting place. And then utility, right? It's how can we make your life easier to start adding this to your practice? Uh, we've yeah. got a really good infrastructure, hire the right kind of people, we can help educate them. Perfect. And, and it's, it's a win. Sounds like you guys are on point with that and it's well thought out for sure, which it's, is great. Yeah, I, I think we are. So. Yeah. So, I mean, thinking on a more broad sense, you know, what is it like these days being, you know, leading a company like iCare, an innovator, a disruptor, you know, great solution, but you're in a market space that's, you know, it's tough. You know, because cannabis has, you know, really been the focal mm -hmm. point for investor money. Certainly in this country it has, and yep. to some degree in the U.S. too. Yep. Not a lot of money going into, you know, small micro-cap companies. Mm -hmm. How are you guys navigating that? And how are you finding it, first off? I mean, what's your, what's your experience kind of been? Uh, you know, it's frustrating in some yeah. ways because here you are trying to solve this, this big world problem. And you've, you've become passionate about this problem solving. Yeah. And then you look around and everyone around you who's got some funky idea in this space is making money hand over fist. So yeah. it's distracting. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the aggravation so. factor and, and the yeah, some somewhat the envy, I suppose, for some of these uh, for some of you guys, I mean must be must be up there. You're watching and you're you know, yeah. it's, I'm happy when investors make money because uh, you know, the the good side of it is that the retail investors actually made money here. And yeah. You know, coming from the mining space where it's, you know, big players, big bankers, 
all the big deals get done and the little guy doesn't really make a lot of money. Yeah, you know, yeah. I grew up in the junior mining space where you know, we, we, we were picking bottoms, we were picking stocks that were, uh, you know, I think I was, the, I was like second year university and I got my online trading account. And then I had the Globe and Mail, yeah. I threw some darts and I like online trading, I bought a stock, right? 1994 or five. With, with darts. darts. Literally, so you, you literally, really, yeah, yeah, okay, I, yeah. I kind of bought a fishing <laughs> report or something, and I and I, I'm like, wow, look at the money I made, and I and then I lost it really quickly. And, yeah, and then you know today access to investments have been you know made so much easier with with, with mobile apps and tools and information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that that the, the cannabis space has actually allowed the retail person to make a lot of money. Like yeah. when guys out there are spending money and they're making money, then they're also investing in other things too. So I've, I've been encouraged by the fact that this run has made money for people that can then invest into That's other true. things. Yeah. We've got a fantastic shareholder base, you know, we're, we've got loyal, share, loyal shareholders, but they too are impatient. They're like, I, I want to support the story, but there's this really great tip I got in the cannabis space. Of I, need, yeah. I need some money to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to make that investment. So we understand that uh, the hardest thing about being an entrepreneur is is ultimately having 100% focus on what you're trying to achieve because every minute you spend looking at other things the, is distracting. Yeah, the distraction it's, factor is a killer. You yeah. don't have enough time yeah. in the day and it's really about, you know, just just trust that you're on to the right thing yeah. and, and perseverance, right? It's, uh, it's staying in the game long enough. It's working at it, not giving up and, and making sure that that payday will be there when you get scalability and your product is out there, yeah. which we're starting to get that feedback. Yeah. We can go from 200 clinics to 20,000 clinics. That's and, really, is that, and that's your goal? Glo oh, and that's a, is that a global goal or is that? That's a North American goal. North you know, American there's, only, there's wow. 40, I think 40,000 optometrists in the States. There's, uh, yeah. you know, I don't know how many sports teams. You know, we've got, we've got hundreds of thousands of potential customers that we can sell and, and mm -hmm. you know, build subscribers with. Yeah. Uh, the, the critical point for us is about 1,000. I think when we get to, I've always said, you know, four years ago, if I can get 1,000 people, 1,000 clinics or 1,000 sports, you know, people using our device yeah. on anyone from a five-year-old to a 60-year-old, we're going to get data and profile data on all those performance changes. And then with a little bit of research, we're going to actually have thousands of data points from each location. So you're huge. talking about huge data suddenly that is yeah. suddenly feeding your engine. And everything is designed so that the data comes to us and then we can architect it and we can process it and we can put machine learning Your on AI it. is just gonna explode. Well, yeah, AI is exactly. not something you have to build anymore. AI, you know, we use Microsoft Azure. You know, Microsoft calls us up it's and great. say, yeah. okay, we, you've got your servers, you've got this, you yeah. know, what else? oh, you need AI? Yeah. Okay, let's get some AI. Yeah, here. Azure for so, AI and blockchain is perfect. Blockchain, it's, AI, yeah. security, all these things are, awesome. it's like, from a technology standpoint, we're like kids in a candy store now, right? It's like, yeah. I, I had the first iPhone, I'm a tech fanatic, I, yeah. I love it. So for me, it's the challenge is building something for five years from now when the de people you're dealing with today maybe aren't even familiar with how to use an iPad, right? And it's like, that's exactly here's this amazing yeah. thing we've built and then the questions we're getting are, how do I log in? Right, so those are the challenges. Is hold on, you're, we're futurists. We're building for the future. Yeah. But you've got to keep it at a spot where it's easy enough for people to use that, that the everyday person can just log in and, and have issue, and have a That's good perfect. experience with it. So, so the cannabis space has been distracting. But, yeah. Uh, and uh, but I, I'm an optimist, so I think it's brought yeah, uh, yeah. opportunity for people. And and you know I think there's some consensus out there too now that the steam has kind of come off that space. Real companies are starting to you know kind of shine, whereas the ones who had the weaker business models are, like I said, the steam's coming off the top. So, I I would imagine that you know you, you would be thinking that at some point there's going to be a little rotation. Investors are going to start looking for you know those 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 companies with value that are way undervalued mm -hmm. and those companies that are doing amazing innovative things like I care mm -hmm. and and I think some of that you know is is got to it's got to help you guys um, as as things move forward which is which is great you know you know sector rotation it's been, it I happens. mean how, how many times have we seen that in our careers right uh, enough already and we've missed yeah. a few of them ourselves I'm sure so yeah, yeah. so for me I think of it as um, as, yes, the steam's come off a little bit. Investors, when you're always running to the to the hot IPO, to the hot story, it's like, you know, it was an obvious trade, cannabis, right? Like, 
30% of Canadians use cannabis. I don't know what the numbers are, but you're talking about revenue, like quick revenue that these companies can grab. Yeah. It's getting a little bit more complicated now because you've yeah. got uh, the genetics companies, you've got the, you know, you're not just the straight producer anymore, you know. Yeah, yeah, Two yeah, years of course. ago, you, hey, I've got a license and I'm a hundred million dollar company. That's right, I'm farming cannabis. Yeah, That's yeah, right. so I'm now, a billion dollar company. Yeah. Now it's getting yeah. tougher. The easy money's been made and, uh, yeah. and what we're hoping is that you see this money flow into healthcare and ultimately we've, we're sort of like a technology healthcare hybrid, right? We're, yeah. you know, HIPAA compliant. We're trying to make sure that everything is done at the highest standard from a healthcare perspective, but we're more of a technology play, right? And, uh, and, and yeah. the most important thing is, you know, we started out with this smartphone, right? This Apple released this device and then there were apps yeah. and then there was Facebook. And, yeah. and, uh, and as, as everything progresses, the, you know, I'm not going to call them the, the dumb problems, but like, you know, the stuff that is easy for people to do that everyone does. It's like photos, right? Like I knew, I knew right away that now that they've digitized a photo and it's on Facebook or wherever it is, 10 years from now, I'm going to have mapped every picture I took around the world. And it's going to be clear that right. I'm going to have a world map that's going to show my 10 years history. Oh, yeah. And yeah, where your I'm timeline. Going, right? Yeah, it's so, excellent. Yeah. So when you think about it that way, that's, these, are, these are solutions that have been built by Facebook, Twitter, um, you know, like these Google, billion, all of the above. Yeah. Billion, all yeah. billion people using these infrastructures. So as they have that infrastructure, they've got to, they've got to move into the, the spaces that haven't been disrupted yet. And healthcare and education are on sort of the tail end of that. Yeah. Our platform drives better visual systems. That's a healthcare solution. You know, you're talking a $50 billion fall prevention market. You know, what would insurance companies do to keep people alive of course. longer from yeah. falling off? A, you know, you yeah. step off a, a curb and you break your hip. That's because you didn't see it. That's because your visual system is not tuned to, to what you need it to be. Exactly. Whether you're driving yeah. a car or whether you're stepping off a curb. So I've seen technology solve all these great problems, you know, skip the dishes, right? Like, you know, Uber. These are not these are these are not inventions that are ingenious. These are the brilliance is the simplicity that I took a map and I took a payment system and I took a yeah. Uh, you know, a delivery system. I took a yeah. food company and I put them together into a solution. And right? that's exactly so what you guys have done. That's what yeah. we're trying you're to do. You're not reinventing the wheel. You're just, you're taking the wheel, making it better. We bought and a that's, company that's, that's one of the better. best laws of marketing is, is, you know, not trying to reinvent things, just make them better. We, and I we like that. bought a company that's been around since the early 70s that has thousands of, of people that have experienced it, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of patients that have gone on it. Yeah. yeah. How can we leverage the data? How can we make it a better experience? How can we scale it to millions of people? And, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. yeah. So we kind of know about the end game. Yeah. It's about surviving long enough through the you know through times that are lean, through times that are uh, difficult when everyone's. Investing and and in which cannabis. you guys have done. Well, which you guys have remarkably here. done. And yes. congratulations Thank for you. you. So, I think you know what I want. I want to drink some more of this this fabulous awesome. wine. I'll join you. Um, so why don't we do this? Final two questions. Okay. These are a little off base. First question: Are the Leafs going to make it to the playoffs this year? <laughs> It's something that, you know, I mean, everyone's talking about it. Are they going to make it? Of course they're going to make it. Come yeah, on. Yeah, all right. I, I, you I think, think so? I think that's an easy one. Okay, yes. they, all right. They seem to have that. I'll hold that you to that, okay? And, okay. Yeah, and then uh, second question, very important one, because it's coming up. Mm -hmm. Who's your favorite for the Super Bowl? Patriots. Really? Yeah. I, You're going for the Patriots, eh? Another just, one. Another so, one for okay. those guys. So Tom Brady. Yeah. Uh, big into vision training, like brain training, um, just a genius behind the wheel. Like yeah. I, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I have so, I struggle with it so much because, you know, you've got, they've won all these things, but I know you want the you underdog know. to win, right? I mean, you do, but I just, I love, I want the underdog to be winning until the final win of the game. And then I want I to see Brady do his magic I know. because I, you know, I don't have a favorite. I can't. I can't do it because I know the Patriots are going to win. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. I'd like to say, you know, the Rams have got it, but, you know, I think, yeah, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm we'll going see. Patriots. So. Are you? All right. Well, we'll see. Adam, thank you so much for Real joining pleasure. us. It was uh, great um, finding out more about iCare Innovations. Mm -hmm. I think you guys are on an incredibly brilliant track, and I think um, investors, our reviewers, um, everybody should have a look at this company and find out a little bit more. Um, your, your website is, is it iCarrot.ca or is it? iCarrot.com. iCarrot.com. So, um, I and the carrot. Carrot.com. So. Awesome. Okay. Adam, thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you for joining us. Thanks everyone. We're going to be off on our way now to sample some more of this lovely wine. There Cheers. You thank you, sir. Thank you, Adam. Thank you.